RCF podcast. Thank you. We've got Brett here with us, guys. What's going on, guys? And we're doing another edition of Meet the Coach, this time with Brett. Brett, how do you say your last name? For, um, the correct pronunciation is Ferlicci. With an R, F-R. F-R-E. Yeah, I changed it a, a while ago. I, cha- I, ch- I changed it back to the way it is right now. Um, but for a while, we had changed it on my Facebook page to my wife and I. Actually, Amber still has it the way we, she still has it. Uh, but we changed it back to the way it was originally spelled or the way we believe it was originally spelled when my grandfather came to America. Because okay. he's from, uh, from there, came from Italy. So um, I'm third generation in this country. Um, but yeah, originally it was spelled, we believe it was spelled F-E-L-I-C-C-I, Felici. Okay. But the storyline goes is that when my grandfather came to America, they were in a a neighborhood that was predominantly German, Uh and there was some discrimination between Italians and Germans at that time. So he changed the spelling of the name to make it look more German. Oh, okay. So that's why everybody, when they see the name, when they see it out there on my my, uh, driver's license, they want to say Frilich. Yeah. And make the E silent, but and if that's correct, no, it's Frilicci. Oh, okay, so that's why they changed it to make it so Frilich sounds more German than Frilicci. Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, totally. I could see that. Absolutely. Okay. Cool. Awesome. So Brett Frilicci. And it doesn't help that uh, it doesn't help hurt that uh, we were from northern Italy, so we weren't the dark Italians. Uh, you know, the dark hair and, and everything, dark complexion. We're light hair and light complexion. So it kind of also helped kind of make us blend in with the, with the Germans in the neighborhood, I guess. I didn't want to say that you look nothing Italian Exactly. <laughs> my dad the same way. My dad's full Italian. I'm half. My mom has a little bit more of a Heinz 57 mix. Um, so I'm basically half Italian. But, yeah, my dad was full Italian. I still have um, everybody back east uh, is, is centered around Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, yeah, and they're, I got some relatives that are 100% Italian. Okay. Yeah. What's the rest of it? Uh, on my mom's side, it's some English, um, maybe a little Dutch, a little French, um, more Northern European. But yeah, it's 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 all European. Okay. Um, but yeah, it, I identify more with the Italian side a little bit, even though I, I don't have uh, any kind of I would say my dad's stubbornness that he gets. But you know that remains to be seen. But uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> can you eat pasta without getting a rash or like? Oh, I can eat pasta, no problem. Okay, cool. So you are <laughs> then you are Italian. Yeah, That's... I can eat. I can eat. I, sh- I haven't done. I haven't had a, a big bowl of pasta since uh, I was out with visiting my aunt uh, out in uh, Pittsburgh, uh-huh. uh, where it was basically. I remember sitting down at the table. Amber and I were sitting at the table. And it's like, okay, we've got baked rigatoni, we've got ravioli, and something else. And there's like hardly any vegetables and very little protein. It's like, oh, God, what are we going to do here? That's awesome. Yeah, the, the pasta is the vegetable. Exactly, and the meat. Yes. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, now that we know a little bit uh, about your background, um, you have quite the impressive resume, Brett. As on, far on as paper. CrossFit goes. <laughs> yeah. CrossFit level one and level two. Mm-hmm. Kettlebell. Rowing, mobility, gymnastics, weightlifting. You're taking the precision nutrition co- course right now. Yep. You're in the middle of that. You just took the IN3 nutrition. I in- went through that. And so, yeah, we're finishing. We're working on that. We have the case study that we have to complete. Okay. Uh, before we get our certification in that. And you're also working on your NASM uh, nutrition? Just took the board exam last week, so I'm waiting to hear. I'm sure I wouldn't get here too much from this uh, from NASM this week doing, due to holiday break, so I'm waiting to hear uh-huh. back on how that test went. And then coming up pretty soon, in a couple of weeks, me and you are going to the master's course. We are. You are the most decorated coach that we have <laughs> when it comes down to it. Really? I mean, the amount of knowledge that is inside that CrossFit brain of yours is pretty extensive. What made you, do you just enjoy studying? Do you enjoy, like, were you, before you answer this question, did you like school growing up? No, I was, I was, just, I, I, I had too much fun in high school and college. Okay. Um, I was into more other things. I was, I was your average student. I wasn't like your A, B student type of thing. I was more B, C-ish uh-huh. around there. Okay. Um, but you didn't enjoy studying. You didn't enjoy... 
I don't. I, I still don't. I, I have a hard time even studying, reading something. Uh, a lot of times I'll read a paragraph and I'll, I'll realize after I read that paragraph, it's like, shit, my mind just wandered. I, I got to rewrite it, it again, reread yeah. it again. So what made you, why all these courses? Well, the cool thing with all the, um, you know, with regards to the uh, CrossFit courses, you know, there is a, usually there's a manual or a, a course guide that you want to read and study um, before attending it. Um, but all the specialty courses, some of them, you just go and either, you know, you learn a ton or you get beat up or a little bit of both. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. I remember hearing about the original CrossFit level ones, what they were like back in the day. It was basically just a beat down. You'd show up and do like three or four workouts in a day and then the same thing, come back three or four workouts in the next day. Yeah. A little bit of teaching in between. And then <laughs> yeah. that was your level one experience. Exactly. It's, it's changed quite a bit since then, but you're, um, you and en- you enjoy CrossFit. Like I you, do. You really truly love this stuff. I do. Yeah, it's your life, right? Yeah. Right now, it's it's it's. I've made it my life. I've always wanted to be more involved with it. Um, and then last year, uh, this past year, I did basically decided, yeah, this I want to be more involved with CrossFit and more involved with nutrition. When you say more involved with CrossFit, I think you're you're not being as truthful as, as what you did. You, what was your full-time job? Uh, so for 19 years, roughly, uh, I worked in insurance as a claim adjuster, uh, going out to look at total fire losses and homes or businesses, um, and working with policyholders for several years, basically, as they went through the claims process. And so that was taking a lot of time, um, a lot of desk time, a lot of uh, drive time, um, and a lot of times being, getting all smoky, being out of burn down home. Mm-hmm. So, and then after 19 years, you decided I, it, it was just getting the stress level was getting really high. The demands from the companies were getting a little crazy. And I kind of saw a negative, I saw a really negative effect on myself and my home life with my wife. Um, and it just, t- it was just taking a negative toll and it just got to the point where it's like, I don't, I don't have any desire to do this anymore. I just don't. And so we basically made a decision, uh, talked about it with my wife, um, that, yeah, it was time to make a change. And what did you, you just quit? Yeah. It's, they're going to start to make changes. They're going to dump about a ton of work on my lap to say, you know, here's what you're, cause I, I was out for a while cause I had a back, uh, back nerve injury. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was coming back and I was trying to get back into the swing of things. And there, you know, I was, I had thoughts about before I was out. And then I came back, and they're about to dump a bunch of work on me. And it's like, you know what? And I was talking to Amber, and we were discussing it and made sure we can make the change. And uh, before they gave me all that work, I told my boss, I said, look, before you do all this and, you know. Give me all, all these new responsibilities. Yeah, exactly. I don't want you to have to reassign it to somebody else all over again. Um, it wouldn't be fair to the customer and everything. So it's, it's – I got to tell you something. And, yeah, I gave my notice, and – Amber said that as soon as I gave that notice, I came back downstairs from being in my uh, office upstairs, and she noticed a total change in me right then. There's a huge change. So yeah, it's basically it's a, it's a, it's a change for the better. And I've actually been a little bit. I've become the jealous person, or not the jealous person, but people that I still keep in contact in the in that line of work uh-huh. uh, are jealous of how they can see a change in me. Oh my gosh! So that, it's, that was scary. Yeah, it was scary. Yeah. How, it still is a little scary. Okay, I was gonna, I was <laughs> you know? gonna, that's what I was gonna ask. Is it still scary? Is it still like a little bit? You know, it's because we all know there's no money in this stuff. No, there. <laughs> yeah, and, and so I'm trying to, you know, hopefully with the nutrition that will help a little bit. But yeah, and I and, and when we knew that me leaving this job, um, you know, it's it's basically half our income, um, and we knew that going into this line of work. I wouldn't bring it back. I wouldn't be bringing back that same amount of money. At least I wouldn't, ex- I'm not expecting to bring that kind of money back. Yeah. Um, but we just kind of made things work with it. You know, it just kind of was like, okay, well, we'll just make some changes and take things some of these way. But yeah, it's totally worth being happy and, and passionate about what you want to do. Yeah. It, I mean, obviously that passion was there just even before going into this, all of these courses that you've taken and stuff, it's the path has been written. Yeah. You just decided to finally actually do it. Right. I've been trying, point. I was trying to do, what I was more passionate about on the weekends, uh, and also in, in, in the evenings, uh, and then stick with the day job. But, um, the day job is just encroaching more and more and eating more and more time. And it's just got to the point where it's like, yeah, I got to make this change and let's see if we can't make this CrossFit thing work out. Awesome. 
Heck yeah, man. Very cool. So uh, now you're here with us. Yes. Coaching CrossFit. Very happy. Coaching our endurance class. Yep. Um, help. We're starting Coast Range Nutrition, mm -hmm. you and Brittany, which is going to be a whole new company that we're actually embarking on. So that's exciting. We're just kind of starting with this nutrition challenge that's coming up. Um, and then me and you are going and taking a master's course in a couple of weeks and looking at starting CrossFit, Coast Range CrossFit Vitality, right? Can yeah. you tell us a little bit about what that's going to be? So that's going to be working with uh, some more of our senior athletes. Um, you know, I've always been curious about how we can apply CrossFit to more of our senior athletes, you know, basically trying to keep those people um, functional out of the nursing home. I um, always was really curious about how do I work with my mother that doesn't really have the best physical fitness level, mm -hmm. uh, never was really into strength training or anything like that. Um, but how do I keep her healthy and functional where she doesn't have to rely on, you know, I mean, she's nowhere near this, but keep her away from the walker, keep her walk away from the cane, you yeah. know, rely on other people. Um, you see people all over the place that, you know, th there's such a large population with of seniors that are getting into CrossFit and they're, they're doing great. But I'm thinking about the other people that aren't going to the master's games. Yeah. I'm looking at the grand, our grandmothers that aren't, that need to, you know, work on things that to keep them out of the nursing home. Totally. Yeah. Uh, what is fitness by Greg Glassman? The original article he wrote, it said that the needs of our Olympic athletes and our grandparents differ by degree, not kind. I love that. Right. Like That's we my, all need one to my squat. favorite, it's my favorite Glassman quotes. Yeah. It's like, we all need to squat, you know, we all need to be able to get ourselves up off the ground. The degree that which we need to do that to varies extensively throughout everybody, you know, and mm -hmm. that's amazing. I mean, like we got the eight thirty class going on right now in front of us and it, there's all different shapes, sizes, ages, yeah. athletic abilities within that class. And I think that the, the older population, I'm talking 70, 80, nineties is the one that we're really missing out on because what functionality just ends, you know, yeah. when we get to that age, like, no, it doesn't end. You exactly. have to keep it, but intensity definitely comes down. Right. And so, the guy that actually got me into CrossFit is now 65 years old. Oh, my gosh. That's awesome. Yeah. He's still doing it. Yeah. He's actually – he competed in the Games Masters regions last year. And he's a funny it's, – it's, he's a, he's a runner-based, so he's a very uh, skinny guy. Uh -huh. um, but, yeah, he, he was doing CrossFit. He got into it. He was a, basically a, a distance runner for a long time. He ran with his family. And he started doing CrossFit. He told me he started doing CrossFit, got his core stronger. And he said he's at that time he was six years old, and he told me at that point he's so run. He started doing CrossFit at 60. sixty. At six years old, he started doing CrossFit. He was always been a runner. He's been a runner for his whole life, and he said that since he started doing CrossFit, he bested his run time in thirty-five years by two minutes. Oh my god! At sixty, sixty years old. So since so he was he running was to 30, twenty-five, twenty-five years old, he twenty-five was, he to was, sixty. So technically, he was fitter at sixty than he was at twenty-five. Exactly. CrossFit. Yeah. That's awesome. So I was like, okay, what's going on here? Great. Okay, so that's a great, like, let's take a step back. So um, tell me how you did get into CrossFit and that, how this guy got you into it. So, yeah, we were, I was working, I was, I was working in insurance. We were, uh, I was at a mediation and he was the attorney, he was an attorney uh, up north. Um, and I knew, he, like I said, I knew he was a distance runner, mid-distance runner. Um, and I was, I was asking, what do you guys do? What do you do? Do you do any training outside of running to prepare you for running? And that's when he told me about how he got into CrossFit and how that's helped him. So I was like, huh. And I was, and I was basically just doing the Globo Gym stuff, and I was bored out of my mind. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'd go with my Amber would want to go, you know, do, do something. And so she'd get on the treadmill and watch, you know, watch the television and you know, doing the treadmill. Sometimes do some weights. I'd do some things and whatever. And I'd be wanting to get out of there. And after 30, 45 minutes, like, okay, I get out of here. Yeah. Um, and so... I, after you know hearing about this, I told Dr. Emmer about it. We went to our local gym, signed up for a class, and it brought me back to my high school days. After that training session, it's like it brought me back to my wrestling days where it was like okay, cool, drained out of my mind. So you're a former wrestler, former high school wrestler. All wrestlers are CrossFitters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I feel like it's like ingrained in their DNA to like want to suffer. So yeah, it was like yeah. okay, this is what. I miss. I don't. I, I don't like just sitting around just lifting weights and whatnot. I you know I do like doing that, but I want to feel completely wiped out. Yeah, done. So were you when you initially met this? What was this guy's name by the way? Clark. Clark. His name is Clark Holland. Clark Holland. Yes, Holland. Holland. Clark Holland. When you originally met Clark, were you an active? I mean, would you consider yourself like a fit 
guy. Or I were thought you... I was fairly fit. You know, I played ice hockey. Uh, I got okay. into ice. I was playing ice hockey a bit, um, and when, doing once in a while, doing the strength training over at the local global gym. Uh-huh. Um, so yeah, I thought you know I was doing feeling feeling fairly fit. Um, yeah. So I thought, oh, it's okay. We made this. Okay, cool. Yeah. So it's not like you had like some major health issues going on or no. anything like that. Okay, you were just looking for something more. Right. You were like, okay, what I'm doing is boring. I'm looking for something to kind of change up me a little bit. Whatever it is. Right. Like make my routine not so routine, basically. Right. Right. Okay, cool. Playing hockey once a night or once a week, and, and you know, that was getting expensive. And, and uh, doing the global gym, that was boring as hell, but we had to go try to do something just to get ourselves a little bit better. Yeah, awesome. And uh, Amber was in right away when you said, hey, let's go check this out. She was initially wanted me to be the t- the, the test dummy. Oh, okay, to see cool. It. But then the guy, when we went to the gym, he basically said, look, we got a couple's deal, so if you both sign up, yeah. you know. So we both tried a class. I loved it. She loved it. And then we were both started going. We were hooked from there. Okay, awesome. I had to do some major convincing for me to for get Megan. Me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was a quite the journey to get her to actually agree to do CrossFit and then actually agree to let me go to a CrossFit gym was even like pulling teeth. So the fact wow. that Amber was into it right away was pretty cool. Awesome. Um, okay, great. So you find CrossFit. You go to your local gym. What gym was that? Morgan Hill CrossFit. Oh, okay. Right on. Awesome. Heck yeah. And um, how long were you at Morgan Hill CrossFit? We were there for about a year. Okay. A year and a half. Okay, cool. Awesome. With John and everybody up there? John, Ricky. Cool. Uh, actually, and CJ there was there at the time. Awesome. Okay, very cool. And then you guys started working out of your garage for a little while. Yeah, we started, after we started, got our level one, got our, and get, did some specialty courses. We slowly started piecing together a home gym. Yeah. Um, and now, yeah, it's it's basically transitioned to where we had her car in the garage to now her car is out in the driveway and <laughs> the garage is basically a gym. That's what garages are for. Exactly. Man, the garages are not meant for cars. They're meant for <laughs> barbells and pull-up bars. And everything. Actually, it's so funny. I was just at, on top of our house the other day putting up the Christmas lights and I'm walking around. And I'm so stupid. We've been in there for like three years. And I'm walking over my garage and I'm like, look down. I'm like, wait, what is this? And it was a peak on our roof above the garage. And I was like, Holy shit, I could bust out the ceiling and have room for rings in my garage. <laughs> <laughs> I go running inside to Meg. I'm like, Meg, come look at this. I bring her outside. I'm like, that's a peak. I'm like, we could bust out that ceiling. But she's like, and hang rings. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it's so funny. We're going to do that, I think, next month. We're actually oh, cool. going to go. There. I'm going to pull out all the ceiling in there. We're going to hang rings in there and stuff. And so it's going to be cool. There you go. But um, yeah, so very cool. Uh, okay, so you go to. to Cross at Morgan Hill. You're there for about a year and a half. You slowly start piecing together your gr- gym mm-hmm. in your garage. Somehow you end up over in Santa Cruz at the, one of the original badasses of Cross at Greg Edmondson's gym, Cross at Edmondson. Right. How the hell did you end up over there? So Amber and I, we signed up uh, after we got our level one, uh, which was in November of 2012. Um, we signed up for a bunch, a couple of uh, specialty courses. Uh, we did mobility. We did Olympic lifting. Um, and then that summer, we signed up for a CrossFit kettlebell course, which is going to be at, you know, is going to be held at CrossFit Amundsen with, with Greg Amundsen. I was like, okay, who's this guy? And so, so you didn't know who Greg was. I didn't was know Greg, who Greg was. Oh, man. He's, I, he was my man crush back in the day. <laughs> like hardcore. Him and Miko Salo. They were like, yeah. They were who I wanted to be. 100%. Yeah. 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 He's, he's, it's a, it didn't really hit me until we, you know, did the course with him and, and had a really good time learning the kettlebell, uh, taking the kettlebell course and being taught by him, uh, and really found him to just be a positive influence in both our lives. So, uh, did the kettlebell course with him, um, and then was kind of looking to do some coaching. We didn't, mm-hmm. uh, Morgan Hill was f- set with their coaches. They didn't have a need for new coaches. So we we're kind of looking around. And at that point, CrossFit was starting to bloom a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, so we, we were kind of looking around and, uh, we actually ran into Greg. We went to the games that year. Actually, that was the year you were there. 2013. 2013. Okay, so like 100 years ago. <laughs> Got it. Cool. <laughs> um, and Greg was teaching a kettlebell, one of the uh, CrossFit Experience courses. He oh, was okay. teaching yeah. the kettlebell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and he had a booth there, so we ran into him and uh, just started talking to him about 
possibility of going through their internship program and coaching. Right on. Um, and so, yeah, we, we hooked up a couple weeks later and started driving over the hill. I was going to say, an hour drive over the hill and back every right. day. After or work. Every weekend, right? Yeah, we were doing, uh, we did a couple of classes during the week. Uh, and for a while, we were coaching Fridays and Saturdays over there. Amber would take Friday nights. Uh-huh. I would take Saturdays. Um, and we did that for a couple of years until traffic really started to bog down. And we were pushing, we were risking running late getting to class yeah, to coach. Gotcha. Yeah. And so we basically had to put the axe on coaching Fridays because I didn't want to have Greg on behind the eight ball if we can't make it over. I'm going to call him, call him like five minutes before because sometimes he's coaching classes not just his classes, but he's also teaching classes throughout the country doing the law enforcement uh, seminars. Yeah, yeah. At that point, he was also doing kettlebell courses. So there might just be anybody there to coach all right. if you don't show up. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So uh, yeah, we basically said, look, you know, just to be on the safe side, we had to take uh, off Fridays. and just So we were, for a while, we are just doing Saturdays. Yeah, awesome. So, yeah, that's how we got over to Santa Cruz, and we've been there for four over four years now. Man, that's awesome. Heck, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so – I want to kind of like go down a little bit of a different path here. Okay. Like, great. We know that your extensive knowledge of CrossFit is amazing. And obviously CrossFit, I mean, I, I feel like for me, like it's, it is who I am. You know what I mean? Like CrossFit is, it's who I am. It's who's made me what I am today. But you have some other really pretty awesome interests outside of the gym, specifically with animals. Like you seem like you have a very big love for animals. And when I say animals, specifically marine animals yeah. right yeah uh, you're part of the sea shepherd uh crew right i or like you I, I love i'm not like let's put that way. i'm not like volunteering on their ships to go down to antarctica or anything like yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah i follow sea, sea shepherd uh i've got a couple of their you know clothing items uh, a couple of mugs and everything so i definitely follow the sea shepherd i really have a strong appreciation for what they're doing yeah um but yeah, I would I would love to be on. It'd be pretty, pretty pretty cool to be on a cruise ship to work on that. But I think I would just be barfing my freaking <laughs> head off, and then also trying to survive on a vegan diet would be kind of would be pretty uh, oh, pretty they, challenge. They're all vegan. They're all vegan on the ship. They don't have any animal protein. They're okay. not, it's not vegetarian. It's vegan. Gotcha. Um, okay, so what made you get why why animals like why specifically marine animals and ocean and stuff like that? Always had a love for the ocean. Um, Back in the back in the high school, I was even wanting to get into like marine zoology. Oh, okay, wow, cool. Um, but then when I went going through college, you know, like I said, I was a BC student. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I saw how much chemistry and math and everything that you needed to get through, and I was like, I don't know if I have the discipline enough to get through that. So, okay. uh, basically, just kind of transitioned to a, a hobby. Um, got into scuba diving. Uh, and Amber went, and I basically I got Amber roped into that. Um, so she she and I got into scuba diving together. Uh, we got our open water, and we even did a, a rescue diver course as well. Oh, cool! So we had through and went did that. Um, on the side, since we got into CrossFit, our local diving trips kind of dwindled because we were so busy on Saturdays and Sundays was almost like a day of recovery and getting the house back together <laughs> that we basically had to stop almost uh, doing any kind of scuba diving. But we still do our, our vacations that we take are always based on what do we want to see in the water? Gotcha. You guys just did a pretty cool vacation somewhere exotic, right? It was warm water. I know we, that. we did. Uh, we had a couple. We did um, the most la- the last one we did was in 2016. We went to the island of Tonga. Okay. And where's uh, that? That is South Pacific. So if uh, it's between Hawaii and New Zealand. Okay. And the southern uh, southern hemisphere. Um, And we basically were. Did a trip where we basically got on a boat uh, every day in the morning and cruised around the islands looking for humpbacks. And then when we'd spot them, we would be able to jump in the water with snorkel gear and swim with humpback whales. Wow. That makes you feel small. Oh, it, it definitely made you feel small. Yeah. There's yeah. There's a, a couple times where it's like, holy crap, we're close. Wow, that's so cool. Yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So, and we're doing that one again. We've actually, it was such an impactful trip. I mean, it was basically to the point where when I was leaving, I was getting emotional. So we're doing that trip again uh, <laughs> next September. We're going back and, and getting back in the water with them. It was just such an amazing, exhilarating experience to be next to something that massive uh-huh. and that gentle 
that it was it was so cool. The Cavs are getting really really curious because that's, that's where they Tonga, the Tongan whales come from Antarctica. It's kind of like how Hawaii gets humpback whales from Alaska. Those okay. that migration path. Okay. The Tongan whales come from uh, Antarctica. Okay, gotcha. So they come up there. They go to Tonga. The, the females give birth. Uh huh. In the warmer um, water. In the warmer water. Yeah. And so the calves are just born like in October. I mean, uh, July, June, July, um, and they're there till like October, and then they go back down to Antarctica to feed. Oh, okay. So it's that whole migration path. Wow, that's cool. How did you guys find that spot? Research, uh, basically. Did you, did you just look up humpback whales? Just looked or? up humpback whales. You saw some photos before of people getting water. It's, I know you see videos, and it's like these divers are getting really close to humpback whales. Like, how are they doing this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we want to be so we want to be cool to be that close. Um, so we looked at and we looked into that and found um, Tonga is a, you know, a destination with whales, and it's one of the few countries that you can actually get in the water with them you know in hawaii they you know maintain like 100 foot distance uh, okay. um tongue in the water the only thing is that if a the boat is with a whale for 90 minutes then basically you leave that whale alone for 90 minutes okay gotcha so you can be with the boat with the you know, boats with the whale after that 90 minutes they have to leave and that basically the rule is no other boat, boat can be around that whale for 90 minutes you gotta let that whale alone um and that usually is, you know, usually not with the whale that long. Usually they're they're curious for with you for a few minutes, and then they're like, Later. and then they're like, okay, we're we're going, okay, and it's gotcha. like, you know, you're not gonna keep up with the damn whale. Yeah, it's like you can, <laughs> I, 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 they, they can be cruising just really gently, and I'm kicking my ass off trying to see if I can't keep up with them, and I'm like, done. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Awesome. And so you, a new trip's coming up when? Uh, September again. We're going back okay, uh, for awesome. a couple of weeks. Cool. Heck yeah. So, uh, what is that? It's January, February, March, April, May, June, so July. Out. Okay. So nine for months. a while. So in nine months. Okay, cool. So enough time to save up some money. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Awesome. Heck yeah, man. Okay, cool. So, um, let me ask you this. What is, what, what's the future hold for Brett? Like what's coming up? What is the CrossFit and, and your life and everything look like in like over in 2018, let's say, um, basically just that just teaching crossfit here at coast range um being more involved with the gym uh and also with the nutrition side of things getting keep keep learning on on the nutrition and you know being able to apply it to everybody awesome um yeah, yeah i'm so fired up about this little venture that we're going on with the nutrition stuff yeah. because i think especially we've seen it with you know greg over the last like probably six months specifically he's been doing it for forever but really pushing the fact that look Great. You guys are all in the gym. You're blaring music. You're working out six, seven. If there was eight days, we'd do it a week of CrossFit. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Uh, but where's the nutrition stuff? Where's the, you know, the, the education on the health yeah. side of this? And he's really pushing into the affiliates, trying to get them to step their game up with education on nutrition, you know? And he's even gone as far as saying, basically, hey, you're, you're not doing CrossFit unless you're eating a low-carbohydrate paleo-ish diet, right? Meats and veggies, nuts and seeds, some fruit, little starch, and no sugar. Right. If you're not eating that, doing CrossFit together, then he's saying you're not doing CrossFit. And he's like, because it's this whole thing. It's, it's not just Fran and Cindy and Diane and all these awesome workouts we do. It's the lifestyle factor behind it of like nutrition and health and everything too, coupled in with that. And he's like, it's like if you're doing CrossFit without the diet, you're in a boat with one oar. Right. You know, he's like, you're not going anywhere. You need to have both oars in the water to make this thing happen. So I remember Nicole Carroll, there was a video back in the day with Nicole Carroll and she was talking CrossFit and she was very blunt. Oh yeah. She is very, yep. But she basically says you cannot, if you're eating shit, mm -hmm. you can't, you're, any, everything you do in the gym is for nothing. Yep. You can't outwork a bad diet. Oh my God. I have one of my favorite stores, uh, Hollis Malloy, you know, Hollis. Oh yeah. he's, <laughs> he gave a, a lecture at one of the level ones and he was saying, he goes up to Nicole after he'd been around for a couple of years at this point, you know, and or maybe not a couple of years, but a while long enough where he felt like he should have a pull up basically. And he didn't have one yet. You know, and so he goes up to Nicole and he goes, Nicole, he's like, I, I, you're so good at pull-ups. Like, how do I get a pull-up? And she just looks at him and goes, you're not doing the diet and walks away. And that was it. That was her. You know, and it, if, he's like, at first it was like, what? Like, how rude was that? You know, but, <laughs> but then he sat there and thought about it. And it was like, that was actually the best coaching cue that she'd ever given him. 
because there was no coaching cue that she was going to give him in that moment to get him a pull up. Yeah, hey, do more work. She was like, no, go get in your fucking kitchen, cut up some veggies, start doing zone. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. that's how you're going to get a pull up. You know, I thought it was just so cool that like, she's less like, I, I don't know if you, you know, most CrossFit gyms now, it's so popular. So many people, and you know, I think a lot of people are afraid to say that to people they're afraid to lose members right Mm -hmm. and it's getting watered down to the point where it's like i think that that it should be that blunt you know what i mean it should be that when somebody walks up to you and they're 50 pounds overweight and they're wondering why they don't have a pull-up like we should be okay with saying hey it's because you're 50 pounds overweight yeah (laughs) yeah, you can't sugarcoat it like i'm had like every year that i do murph and i put that 20 pound vest on I go, thank God I don't weigh 20 pounds more than I weigh. <laughs> like, because these are the hardest pull-ups I've ever done in my life, right. you know? And it's like, I do that with one of our members, actually, every once in a while. He'll kind of yo-yo a little bit, and then one day he'll come in and he'll be like, yeah, you know, I don't think, you know, I think I'm doing pretty good and stuff like that. And, and I'll just go, hey, how much did you used to weigh? And he'll tell me. I'm like, okay, go step on the scale. And he'll step on the scale. I'll go get the weight vest. We'll put whatever he used to weigh. I'll put that on him, and I'll make him do a workout with it on. And I'm like, hey, you want to weigh that again? And he's like, fuck no. Exactly. You know, and immediately he's back into it. Like, okay, cool. I'm eating good again. I'm not doing this. You know, and it's like, you just need those constant reminders. But I thought that was one of the coolest coach EQs I've ever heard. <laughs> Nicole Carroll to Hollis Moy, you're not doing the diet. Walks away. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, yes. Think and about he, that one. He gives that, he gives that um, little story when he does his nutrition lecture at the level one. So it's pretty cool. That is cool. Yeah. But I'm really excited, Brett. Um, not only that you took the leap to change your life, get away from a job that paid you really well to one that doesn't pay you very well at all. (laughs) (laughs) It's so funny. I always like, we have so many amazing coaches here and I don't know how, I don't know how we have all these amazing coaches because we don't pay you guys very good at all. (laughs) You know? And it's just like, that's just the nature of this beast. You know what I mean? It's like, there really isn't money in this thing, but there's a lot of, of different type of feedback that you get from it. You may, your bank account may not be getting big, but your emotional bank account is getting huge. when You coach CrossFit, you know? And and you're right. I mean, the coaches we have here, it's, it's pretty amazing how just sitting here sometimes and watching people, it's like, there's so much to learn Mm -hmm. from all of us. I mean, yeah, all of us. Reed, Britt. Dennis now, uh, Adelina, Michaela, I mean, everybody, it's like, uh, it's it, pretty cool. Yeah. It's pretty cool. And the future looks bright for sure. I, um, <laughs> I feel like, you know, every time that I've, I've done the interview now with you and Brittany and Adelina and I'm always like, so what does the future hold? <laughs> <laughs> and everybody's like, oh, you know, like, uh, be here for a while, like at least a couple more years and stuff. I'm like, yes. <laughs> okay. All right, cool. We're good for a couple more years. All right, let's try to get some more money in this place and pay you guys. So, <laughs> yeah, awesome. All right, Brent. Well, thank you so much for sitting down with me. Sure. I really appreciate it. I hope um, gave you everybody else a little bit of insight on just how lucky we are to have you here with the amount of knowledge that you have and everything you have. And then the fact that you were, you did something that everybody – I feel like at some point comes across to their head, like, God, if I could just quit this job and do what I love and, but they never do it. And you actually did it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and it took some pretty big changes. I'm sure. Took some changes. And, and again, a shout out to, to Amber for being able to, you know, have that, you know, being, we're talking through and everything, making sure we can do it together. Yeah, she awesome. controls basically all, she's our financial guide. You know, she does all that stuff. So it was like, can we making sure we can do it before I just pull the trigger? Cause it's an emotional thing right now. I just want to pull it, but yeah, let's make sure let's talk about it. We, like it took a few months, but yeah. Awesome. Cool. Well, awesome, Brett. Thank you for uh, doing this with me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. It. All right, brother. All right. Yep.